Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it is time for a dynamic effort lower day, but a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please remember to click like down below, be greatly appreciated. Alright, uh, in trying to get used to the wider stance squats that I'm doing again, I decided to uh, do some speed boxes with a wide stance and to use a straight bar for these. And I'm going to have to learn to find grips again that are comfortable on my shoulders and interestingly enough this grip will let me get the bar securely on my back and didn't inflame my shoulders at all so we're going to try to work with it i'm gonna have to try to get more comfortable with it make it feel a little more natural we're walking into a meet and this is the same barbell i will be using in competition the exact same brand everything Right, it is the Texas Squat Bar, and that's what I'll be using at Worlds. So, uh, better get used to it being on my back again. So it's going to take me, I think, a few weeks of that, but uh, I think we'll be okay there. And and quite frankly, I really need to be doing uh, competition bars a lot more, even for my speed work and things. Probably not a bad idea. Uh, and my shoulder health is good enough now that I can do this. Right now that I've stopped trying to do stuff like overhead pressing and pull-ups and stuff that aggravate my shoulders, you know, for quite some time now, guess what? All these problems go away. All these problems go away. And I think ultimately for me, with here, it's what it all comes down to. My structure is just not built for my arms to go over my head. <laughs> and if, if we just accept that and live with that, we're good to go. But you, you guys can see um, I've got a pretty wide stance here on these. Uh... I think in the future, once once I get set up and, and I can put everything in a garage, um, I'm going to hook my model lift back up again for the speed squats. It'll it'll make these a lot easier. The, the reason I quit using it originally is because I ran into that problem with the, uh, what's it called? The cambered bar, All right? The cambered squat bar, it was an issue. It was dangerous in that model lift. I had an accident and hit the floor once with, it, with you know, 565 pounds on it. Um, you know, <laughs> again, it's just not designed to go into that. So, I think I'll do that in the future, though, coming up. And I may not squat with that bar much. We could we could simply use that bar for uh, good mornings, right? Simply use it for good mornings. And honestly, probably just mostly for Max Good Mornings because we're going to get a lot more out of what? The safety bar. I feel like the safety bar Good Morning, it's the most annoying, it's the most difficult. But my God, does it carry over to everything? You know, it is just such a phenomenal tool. Yeah, it sucks, but it's great at the same time. So, uh, speed pulls. We we did six doubles. We did seven doubles on the speed squats. I may take that volume up over time. I need to get used to it. Uh, but, you know, we can also compare the volume with this with the amount we're going to do on supplemental lifts. And I think it might be time to work some of the belt squats back in soon. Uh, because you guys will see when we get over to the GHD, my pad on the other side is starting to rip. Okay. It took me six months of back order to get a replacement for the left one. Guess what happened on the right one? The right one's starting to destroy. It's not going to last long. I might have to cut uh, GHD out. You know, and that's been the problem with it. You know, I destroy equipment like that sometimes. That's been one of those pieces of equipment. I got a good deal on the budget Titan one. The pads are terrible, and the replacement pads are out of stock again. They don't have them. All right, back over to the speed pulls. Uh, these went good, very happy with them. And actually, my speed work went really, really well today. Um, it's taken me just a short bit to, to adapt to the lower carbs. Because again, keeping the carbs real low this final month, going into worlds, because I want the, the scale weight to keep trickling down. And again, it's, it has nothing to do necessarily with just fat loss. Although, you know, it does put me in a deficit easier. Uh, my maintenance is about 4,000 calories. So it puts me down under 4,000, a little easier to do when I'm eating pounds of vegetables every day and very low carbs. So, a 
handling the speed volume a little bit better though overall. I'm feeling much better with it this week. Uh, definitely recovering better. Sleep is back on point. Stress is on point. Uh, so we did four sets of the axle bar. My grip and forearms were just on fire. I didn't even try to do a fifth set. You know, I did five sets of rowing yesterday, four sets today. That's nine for half the week. And, you know, as long as we're in that 15 to 20 set range, I think we'll be fine because we do all that extra uh, shoulder work. So this is really my, a lot of my grip and bicep training. But the speed pulls, the axle bar inverted rows, I think these are going to handle most of my grip training for quite a while. But uh, yeah, I mean, one of the things I'm doing too to, to mitigate stress, I'm not even bothering at this point with, with nonsense. Basically, anyone who's just critical of me, I just block them. And it's nothing personal, guys. It's that I'm trying to run a business. I'm trying to prepare for worlds. I just don't have time for it, right? Any trolling, any nonsense, I, I'm just not interested. Okay, that's it. You be critical of my videos, critical of my lifting. I'm just going to block you. And again, it's not about people saying, oh, you can't handle it. Well, I shouldn't have to handle it. I'm preparing for Worlds. You should respect the fact that I am a month out from Worlds and not get on my nerves. Okay? And I think that's perfectly fair. Perfectly fair. Uh, again, common sense, people. I'm not going to let people rattle my cage because people are trying pretty hard. So eye on the prize. I don't care if I lose fans as long as I break a record. See, it's worth it to me. I block 10 long-term fans for getting on my nerves and I get my stress lower and I lose those fans, but I break a world record. Is it worth it? I think it is. So, don't care. All right, <laughs> back over to the GHD. Uh, yeah, the pad's tearing. And, you know, slightly annoying, but you know what? I can build a massive deadlift without a GHD. I'm going to need to make sure my hamstrings are getting hit hard. But guess what? I also have a 45 degree hyper. I have multiple bars I can do good mornings with. We have other tools. Yeah, we have other tools. So we can continue to uh, develop the hamstrings just fine in this scenario. Uh, also, again, coming up in the future, it might be time to work some of the belt squats back in. I don't necessarily need the quad work, but I do need to look at it for the glute and the adductor in. Mm, maybe. Maybe not a bad idea. All right? To play it by ear. And, like I said, I may not do a whole lot of it uh, walking back over into Worlds. And right? I might not. Might do a few sets. But I think after that, going up a weight class... Probably. I need to get that squat up to 600 plus. All right. Which I think will be doable when I'm not trying to do big water cuts anymore. All right. To compensate for the, the slight volume loss there, because I stopped at four sets because I felt like that pad was, I was just destroying it at this point. And I noticed that this whole workout today from set one, and it wasn't like that last week. It's just the wear and tear on it from all the glute ham raises I do on that pad design. So we did an extra set of reverse hypers. We did six sets of 10 with this weight. And this is really my bread and butter anyways. You know, I really look at the glute ham raise as a bit of injury prevention for the hamstrings, right? A bit of injury prevention for the hamstrings just because it, it does develop the full hamstring off of one movement, which is a little bit hard to do. But I don't know that it carries over massively. I don't think it's that big of a deal. As long as I'm getting plenty of other hamstring work, I think we're good. So we can focus more on good mornings. Again, uh, we can focus on this reverse hyper. The reverse hyper really brings more to the table, I think, than any of my other supplemental lifts. And you guys know that. I've talked about it extensively. Uh, again, single best machine for overall strength recovery, prehab, reverse hyperextension. Uh, I'm just a massive fan of this thing, and I'm a fan of getting real strong on it, right? Getting real strong on it. I mean, I'm doing 630. And, you know, some people point out there is a little swinging, but I think people aren't realizing compared to most people when they jump on this, this is actually a, a fairly low amount of swinging for a heavy weight. It's actually below average. Yes, there's going to be some, but there's no way to get rid of that inertia. Where you're swinging a heavy weight on roller bearings. 
Okay, these things have roller bearings in them. If you, know, if you look at one of their Zerk fittings, you have to grease it up and everything. So it is on legitimate roller bearings. So you're gonna have some swing. It's just unavoidable. I'm keeping it fairly controlled, so I'm pretty happy with that. And my strength on this has just gone up and up and up and up. Now I am getting towards the weight limits of, of the device for this budget one. So I'm a little bit concerned there. Um, you know, and I can see myself investing into a better on the road one coming up maybe this next year. Because if I break this thing, then I don't have a vital piece of equipment for my training, right? That's not good. So, um, you know, just have to keep an eye on it. You know, that's, that's the thing. I'm strong enough that some of these equipment, I'm actually strong enough to break it now through wear and tear. And, and, you know, it sucks, but that's just the reality of it. It's a downside to getting strong. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.